So when you hear blood, it is lack of understanding that makes people to be shouting, I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. No, 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 no. You are operating in illiteracy. The blood of Jesus was shed in the Holy of Holies. The blood in the Old Testament was not shed in the outer court. The blood was shed in the Holy of Holies. So the animal was killed in the outer court. Then the high priest will carry the blood of the animal and he will walk once a year into the holy of holies and he will shed the blood on the mercy seat but remember the person that takes the blood to the mercy seat is the high priest and you are not the high priest so that's why you don't sprinkle the blood it is the job of the high priest jesus is our high priest so it is the job of jesus to sprinkle the blood so that is why today we have the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Meaning, the sacrifice of Jesus is the sprinkled blood speaking on our behalf all the time. But when you hear the blood of Jesus, he's not talking about liquid of Jesus, the red liquid of Jesus. Now, that's not what the blood of Jesus means. The blood of Jesus is symbolic of the human life of Jesus. And the sprinkled blood is not liquid, it's his sacrificial work. So when we say blood, we're not talking of liquid. We're talking of a person. His name is Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is the person of Jesus offered through the eternal spirit. You don't plead blood. Blood is human life. Blood is a person. A human being is called blood. Blood. That's why the Bible says, which we are born not of blood. Human life. Humus. So we don't plead the blood because the blood is not liquid. The blood is a person. So when we say the life of Jesus, what we mean is the blood of Jesus. Or when we say the blood of Jesus, what we mean is the life of Jesus. So Jesus, his life is the blood. His work is the blood. So when the Bible said he offered himself, Jesus offered himself. What it means is Jesus offered his blood because his blood is himself but blood is symbolic of that person and the blood of jesus also speaks of his appearance in heaven for us so the blood of jesus is used to typify his humanity matthew 26 28 thank you lord for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins so there will be no new testament if the blood is not shed now please watch the shedding of the blood is not the stealing of the blood because sometimes you hear preachers tell you that when they beat jesus and blood was gushing out of his body that was the blood of jesus shed mm -mm. the shedding of the blood is not the stealing of the blood in fact you even hear preachers tell you seven different parts in the body of jesus where blood was shed his hands the crown of thorns in his head the side that was pierced all of that is not the shedding of the blood because the shedding of the blood was not done in the outer court the shedding of the blood was not done by the man offering the sacrifice the shedding of the blood was not even done in the holy place the shedding of the blood was done on the mercy seat by the high priest so the high priest will take the blood of the sacrifice once a year and he will go right into the holy of holies and shed the blood on the mercy seat so all that blood that was coming out of Jesus' body was not the shedding of blood so where was the blood shed when he died when was he shed when he rose the blood that was shed was not the blood of a dead man it was the blood of a living man the sacrifice of jesus was not death the sacrifice of jesus was resurrection because if you remember mary held him and he said hold me not back i've not yet ascended to my father who will soon be your father and to my god who will soon be your god but go and tell my brethren i have risen the ascension was the shedding of the blood the ascension was the shedding of the blood on the mercy seat where is the mercy seat you are the temple of the holy spirit 
spirit, soul, body. When Jesus rose, where did he go? He went to the mercy seat. Where is the mercy seat? In the holy place in the temple. Where is the temple? You are the temple. So where did Jesus go to apply the blood? He went into you to apply the blood. He didn't go to heaven to apply the blood. The, he, he didn't do it for a planet. He did it for you. The sacrifice was for you. So the impact of the sacrifice will be on you. So when he rose and ascended, the ascension was into your heart. We are seeing wars to apply the blood to cleanse you of sin. And then after cleaning you of sin, he took up residence as the owner of the house. I don't know if I'm teaching good here. He ascended into the believer. He didn't ascend to a planet. He came right into you to take up residence. Remember, he is with you, but he will be in. It's not like Jesus rose from the dead and traveled somewhere. When he said, hold me not back, I've not yet gone to my father, your father. What he was simply saying is that I have not finished this process. The completion of this process will be when I take up residence inside. Because the blood was not applied for God. God doesn't need the blood of Jesus. What does he need it for? He's not the kidnapper. It was not God that held you ransom. It was in God. So the blood of Jesus was not presented to God. God didn't demand blood. God wasn't looking for blood. It's not a Dracula. I need blood. I want some blood. Then Jesus said, don't be angry. Don't be angry. I'm going to die and present blood. Be fast, be fast. Bring blood. Because if I don't have blood, I will kill every human being. I need some blood. Then Jesus said, oh God is thirsty for blood, man. I've got to die and take blood to God. No, he didn't need blood. Because he's not the kidnapper. He does not require ransom from man. So who was the kidnapper? The wages of sin is death. Who kidnapped man? Sin. Man was in bondage to sin. For all have sinned. The wages of sin is death. So the ransom to free man will be paid to sin. Are we teaching? Will be paid to who? Yeah. To sin. Huh. So when Jesus died, who's, who did Jesus settle with his death? Sin. He settled sin. He gave sin what sin demanded. What was the demand of sin? Death. What are we teaching? So, since sin demanded death, Jesus died. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, not the sin of the church. Jesus died for all of humanity. And he offered the blood. Now the blood is not liquid. Liquid is matter. Liquid can survive eternity. So the blood was not liquid. If it's liquid, how much blood do you have in a human body? Remember Jesus is a man. So there's a limit of how much blood he can have in his body. So if everybody is sprinkling the blood of Jesus, which reservoir is that blood in? <laughs> how much does he have that the whole world will be sprinkling it? So the blood of all flesh is the life of all flesh. So when we say the blood of Jesus, we are talking about his life. So when we said he offered the blood, we mean he offered his life. 
so when we say he shed his blood we mean he gave his life on behalf of man to free man from sin so it will be in the resurrection that the blood will be shed because the offering is the offering of his life so by the sacrifice of jesus man is acquitted from sin and all that sin has made available so that's why when jesus rose he ascended into man okay surely he was wounded for bruised for the chastisement of our was by his we are who is the beneficiary exactly so if he died to free man from sin where will he take the product of his death to into man he won't take it to god god doesn't need it he will take it to man who is in need of it if we manufactured a vaccine for covid who will the vaccine be used for man who can be infected with covid you won't produce vaccine for covid and be injecting god with it god cannot have covid god doesn't need any vaccine for covid man that is that is open to covid is the person who needs a vaccine jesus didn't die to free god jesus died to free man oh i'm teaching good because you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear so you must understand how this liberty came so that when we say you are filled with the spirit of god you know the details of what it means to be filled with the spirit of god because the spirit of god is the life of god the life of god is the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is a product of the sacrifice of jesus are we teaching here yes it's a product of his sacrifice so when he died he offered the blood the offering of the blood was the offering of his life number nine i love this i'm telling you much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him now look at verse 10 that's where i was heading to verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more much more being reconciled we shall be saved by what so our salvation is because of his life so his life was given to who to me why to save me so on what basis am i saved i am saved on the basis of the offering of jesus's life so salvation didn't happen in his death salvation happened in his resurrection so the blood that was used to pay for your sin is not the blood of a dead man it's the blood of a living savior somebody shout hallelujah say with me i am saved by his life he gave his life for me and his life now becomes my life when christ who is our life one life one with the lord now when i say the life of christ what does it mean remember what i taught these past two days the life of christ the spirit of christ so when he say he saved us by his life what does it imply he saved us by his spirit born of the spirit the spirit of adoption the spirit of life in christ jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death so my freedom is a product of his life or a product of his spirit or in christ are you seeing yeah saved by his life 
so the blood of Jesus was offered in man because ultimately man is God's heaven man is God's heaven did we read somewhere yesterday where he said I and my father will come into you and make our what what is abode dwelling place so where a man dwells is the man's home so the believer is God's home 